Okay, so I am doing Lab 9, Protecting Digital Evidence, Documents, Documentation, and the Chain of Custody. I have already logged into our Week 5 VLAB area. You can access the lab documents here. Once you've uh, accessed them, they should be as downloaded as a PDF. When you are uh, read through them, you make sure you understand them, at least the steps they're asking. Go and click on Threat Assessment. I'm doing this in Chrome, and so you may or may not get a few pop-ups. I don't really get two Java pop-ups. When you're ready, just in case you didn't download the document already, the steps are right there. But when you're ready to access the lab, go ahead and click on Access VLAB. The allocating and the preparation does take a few minutes, so do be patient. Normally mine loads in about 5 to 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it while this preps. Okay, so my machine is already had and loaded, so I've already looked through the documents. If uh, you get this message right here, that's just meaning that the other two machines are still spinning up, so we're not quite ready yet. So give it a few more minutes, and when uh, the lab environment is ready to go, this will disappear. Because this has to spin up three virtual machines, but on up one, but this message is saying the other two have not quite caught up yet. So please just be patient and wait. <clears throat> okay, so we are ready to go. We're going to go ahead and be launching our RDP session 1. That was one of the virtual machines that was spinning up. Go ahead and close out any of the pop-ups that may happen. Alright, so once we're sitting here, we are waiting for, or we're wanting to access our event viewer. So if you right-click our start button, you can scroll up to event viewer, and let's go ahead and open this guy up. Go ahead and maximize it, make it a little bit easier. So we want to look at specifically some security logs. So we have our custom view, which will just be custom view logs. We have application and service logs. Those are going to be more for our server and services, like DFS replication, DNS, directory. Uh, oh, you know what? DNS has been thrown a few errors. But we really don't care about any of these. We want to go to our Windows logs. That's going to be give our base four application, security, setup, and system. Those are the big ones. So let's navigate to security. And so now we can see that there are lots of logs. But, I mean, how do we filter some of these? There's so much. On the right hand side, there's an action pane. And our thing is we can create custom views, we can import custom views, we can start finding certain things. But for what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to filter. And I want to specifically look for 4625 logs. And those happen to be 4625, as our lab document says, are authentication failures. These are going to be failures. Now why is that useful? That way you could start saying, oh, okay, there may be 20 attempts in a row. 8, 20, uh, 530, 2014, at 8.26 a.m., 26 a.m., 26 a.m. These were all within a few minutes of one another. This could be signs of some type of an attack. So that's kind of why it's important to know. But what happens if we want to save this as a uh, file? You can actually go over here in this 
save filter log file as. That way we have just that. So we're going to navigate to our computer. It wants us to save it on our... Okay, so this is kind of confusing. It wants to save it as a this device, which is actually not this computer's C drive because we're on a virtual machine. We're actually in an RDP session to a virtual machine, which allows us to map back to our login machine's machine. It wants us to save it on this guy's C drive, not inside of our RDP. That's why we have these map drives. These are C and D on our first machine. So we're going to navigate there. We're going to navigate to users, to administration, and to show you this, desktop, student, filtered log, And we do not want to save it as a event file. We want to save it as a text or tab delimiter. And what we're going to see is student should be your name. When I click save, it should populate right there. And there it is. I want to open it in Notepad. And there's all the information. I wouldn't bother trying to print this out because I mean this is going to be several hundred pages I would imagine. So let's go ahead and look at the first login attempt that we have. Which technically will last depending on how you want to look at that. So this is some of that information. There is takes a little while to get used to some of this. But okay, actually that is it for our portion. We're going to go ahead and exit out of our first virtual machine. The instructions do say to write a write up on our text document, so make sure to do that. I'm going to go ahead and move on to part two, generating IAS log errors. And first thing is, we're going to log into our target Windows 2 machine. Close any pop-ups that may happen. And once the machine is fully loaded, let's go ahead and open up Internet Explorer or any web browser. Let's navigate to our We could do localhost because the this machine does do our website. The instructions do say instead of doing localhost, to actually do the IP address. Again, take you to the same spot, and we can see that we're logged in. But can we do certain things? For example, can we run a cmd.exe from our web page? No, we cannot. We can restrict this based off of address or by qualified domain name. But what this is saying is essentially it does not understand where the application is because it is not in our inet pub www root. So it's not quite sure where CMDAXE is first. Second, it also could mean that we don't have the permissions to do this. Could not be that the file is not or the application is not there. It could just be that our user doesn't have the permissions to run this. So I did command, I did ping. I don't know why ping and FTP, these are not 
exes, why would we be doing them here? But that's what our instructions say, tftp.exe. We're generating errors in a log, I know that. But we could have done it with more realistic executable names. And we're going to see that we got all those errors. Let's look at some error logs now. So what we do is we have to go to our inet pub folder. It's going to be on the local C drive. So this virtual machine C drive. Remember, these are the first machine that we log into. And this is our C drive. God, I hate how confusing that gets. We're going to go to inet pub. From here, this is where all of the IIF files are stored. We're going to go to our logs. We're going to go to log files. Uh, we're going to go to the W3SCC1. That's our server's name. And here is the log that we were generated. I happen to do this September uh, 7, 2015. The time is way off, but there it is. Okay, uh, that's actually the end of this lab. I would have preferred to go a little bit further with this, but. Yeah, that, that is our lab according to our lab steps. I wanted to thank you and I hope you had a great day.